All right, so this right here is something so unprecedented in the gaming industry that I have to talk about it. Usually when it comes to games featuring monetization, the trend tends to be let's keep adding more and more. If there's a new monetization trend, those kinds of games tend to go, let's include that. And then they try to make everything just a little worse with every new update until the monetization becomes untenable and just disruptive enough to the gameplay experience. Well, what if I told you one developer decided, you know what, we have all of this monetization in this game. What if we got rid of it? What if we got rid of it all? And that brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the following game, Inkbound. I want to show you the trailer first so you can get an idea for what this game is. The trailer here is a minute long. It gives you a brief overview of the gameplay and what it looks like. There's an indie title. Here's what it is. And there it is. So it is a combination of roguelite elements with like tactical combat. Um, and, you know, for what it is, it looks pretty creatively made. And uh, it would seem as though people are having fun with it based on what Steam reviews are saying, sitting currently at a very positive score of 87%. Recent reviews are at 92%. The game is still in early access. It is $20 for this uh, time period. I think the price will go up a little bit during the final launch. So if you want to get this game uh, for cheaper, now is the time. Now, the conversation surrounding this game has been particularly positive as of late because of an announcement that they made recently on their community page on Steam, where it reads right here, Inkbound, the Starship of Terrors, is removing in-game monetization. They're not just scaling it back, they're getting rid of it entirely, stating, quote, Today we're announcing that we're removing all in-game monetization from Inkbound in our next major update on October 27th, 2023, which is a week from now. It's our goal to create games we can invest into and update beyond release. As developers, we enjoy expanding our games over time, combining our creativity with community feedback to add new content and fun. For that reason, we launched Inkbound with two in-game monetization features to support the ongoing development of the game. The leveling pass, which is the battle pass, does not affect gameplay, it's all cosmetic, and the cosmetic shop, where you use currency to purchase cosmetics. And with this being an indie title, there's a bit more wiggle room for monetization because they actually do need the money. You know, this is actually a self-published indie game. This is Shiny Shoe, who published and developed the title. And to support the game, they figured we should include some form of monetization because they don't know what the financial prospects of the game look like. While trying Trying to ensure that these microtransactions are as generous and straightforward as possible while simultaneously being 100% optional, cosmetic only, with no impact on gameplay, and with no FOMO. For indie devs who don't have all the money in the world, them saying we needed some monetization to support ourselves financially, that's a more reasonable excuse than, you know, those AAA gaming publishers who are multi-billion dollar companies who are going around pretending like they deserve sympathy for the kinds of monetization systems they implement, making excuses like, oh, games are too expensive expensive to make and whatnot when they found so many monetization avenues and so many ways to technically increase the price of games from, you know, $100 early access, which is a new trend now, to, you know, different editions of games that get progressively expensive to all of the different monetization systems they implement and with no end in sight. You know, for them, enough isn't enough. They just have to keep pushing with Inkbound, it does seem like it was a matter of, you know, we're just trying to get to a point where we're financially stable enough. 
And now that they are, apparently they felt that it's clear that industry and player sentiment is trending against the presence of these features. For that reason, we're removing in-game monetization completely. This game launched back in May 22nd, 2023 for early access. They monetized for roughly five months and it seemed as though they're now in a place where they can forego these microtransactions and they deem sort of the company and game's reputation to be more important. And the thing is they didn't have to do this Again, because they're an indie development studio that is self-published, there is more wiggle room for them to do stuff like this because they might actually need the financial support. But the fact that they're still going out of their way to be like, you know what, we don't feel like this is right anymore. And for going monetization entirely, that's just something we don't see in this day and age from nearly anywhere in the industry. That is just so rare and speaks to a development studio that really cares about the community and really cares about how the community feels. And so this is definitely worth talking about. And I wish something like this was more of a trend. I wish it was more the rule rather than the exception. The statement continues. Content from the existing leveling passes will be turned into cosmetic only optional supporter pack DLC sold on Steam. The rest of the cosmetic content will continue to be available in game and earned via playing. So aside from a few cosmetic content that's getting turned into DLC, Everything that was monetized in the game will be added into the game's rewards loop. Uh, it'll just be stuff that you earn by playing the game, by earning in-game currency. There's no more premium currency in this game. And so the game will just reward you for playing as it should be. The developers then thank players who did purchase microtransactions and supported the game while the monetization systems were online. But they don't just thank them. They're offering certain bonuses and rewards to those who did purchase those microtransactions. Anyone who has made any purchases will receive additional bonus rewards as part of this transition as a thank you for your support. And then here are the full details of how that breaks down. So the cosmetic shop, here are some of the changes that they're making. This feature will continue to exist, but the currency will only be earnable via gameplay. Purchasable premium currency completely deleted. The buy shinies button will be removed entirely. Then we have the cosmetic shop will be renamed to cosmetic vault. And then number three, the in-game currency will be renamed from Shinies to Vault Dust. Your existing Shinies will be converted into Vault Dust. So the premium currency will become in-game currency. Now, for those who did buy the microtransactions, they'll be rewarded as follows. If you ever bought any packs of Shinies with real money, we will give you an additional two times amount of Vault Dust. So essentially just a bunch of extra currency. For example, if you purchased a thousand Shinies in the past, regardless if you spent it or not, we will grant you an additional 2,000 Vault Dust. So it's not even how much you have right now, it's how much you've purchased in total. We'll take that number, double it, and give that to you in in-game currency. And then finally, after defeating a Guardian, there will be a chance a chest will appear with a random cosmetic reward from the Cosmetic Vault that you don't already have. So not only can you get the cosmetics that you want by earning in-game currency and buying the stuff that you desire, but the game will also integrate those cosmetic rewards when you defeat a Guardian and when you partake in the gameplay, you'll get random loot that will be rewarding you with cosmetics that you don't already own. So it just makes the entire gameplay experience that much more rewarding because you don't have monetization now stripping away elements of the rewards loop. And then we have details for how the battle pass will be changed. Namely, the battle pass or the leveling pass will be removed fully. And then anyone who owned either the Story Begins premium pass or the Starship of Terrors premium pass will immediately be granted all unclaimed rewards out of the premium track. All the rewards as part of the premium battle pass will just be given out no matter how much progress you made in it. As long as you purchase the premium battle pass as a reward for spending that amount of money, you just get all of the content associated with the premium battle passes. Additionally, anyone who owned either the Story Begins premium pass or the Starship of Terrors premium pass will be granted a thousand vault dust for each pass they owned. So a bunch of currency for players to be able to spend on the cosmetics that they want. And then we're moving the cosmetics contained in the premium tracks into cosmetic only optional supporter Steam DLCs. So there are some cosmetics that you might have to buy separately as DLC, but given what a regression this is in monetization, essentially the full removal of monetization systems in this game, and given that this is still a self-published indie studio that is trying to support itself financially, but taking this big step forward of like making less money for the sake of the community, that's a compromise that people likely, you know, are going to be totally fine with. And for those who bought premium battle passes in the past, you already own all the content in the associated DLC as a reward. 
the developers have decided anyone who bought a premium pass will just get all of that content. And this is an either or kind of situation, whether you own both or you own one, you get all the content for both of these premium battle passes. And for those who own both, just get extra currency. So everyone gets something based on how much support they showed towards the game during the time the monetization was up. And then beyond that, those who purchased individual premium outfits from the Starship of Terror's battle pass when those cosmetics became a part of the shop they're going to be refunded 1250 vault dust the in-game currency per premium outfit purchase and they'll also get to keep the outfit as well it feels like they really thought this through where they're not screwing over people who did purchase the microtransactions and just leaving them behind and just saying thank you and not rewarding them they've thought out the rewards for that really well and then for new players they just won't have to deal with the monetization at all and they can just engage with the game with a rewarding gameplay loop that integrates all the cosmetic rewards as part of the progression system. So everyone wins. Then the free tracks and the existing leveling passes or the free battle pass tracks, the rewards from that will be moved into the cosmetic vault, what used to be known as the cosmetic shop before monetization was removed, and it will thus still be earnable via gameplay. So the cosmetics that were part of the free track of the battle pass will just be integrated in the rewards loop and progression loop of the game. Just more reasons to play the game. Upon the release of the update, there will be a new free track of rewards available to all players that are earned by leveling up the unlocks will include various cosmetic items and vault dust the ui for this has been simplified and moved into the logbook so there's a bunch of stuff coming and all of that content will just be earnable through gameplay there's no additional monetization associations with it it's just more reasons to come back and keep playing the game and more reasons for new players to engage with the title as the game grows in its scale and in its polish and uh, in its rewards that it gives out. And finally, at the end of each season, all seasonal free rewards will move into the cosmetic vault and can be earned from there. There is no FOMO. If you miss the rewards during the season, you can unlock them via cosmetic dust earned by leveling up or in the random drops after defeating a guardian as described above. Also really excellent, the game doesn't punish you for being a new player who's missed out on a bunch of seasons. It's just more content for you to grind for, to keep playing the game for. All the while, you know, with these new seasons, you know, for existing players that just have new content to look forward to, new rewards to look forward to. No FOMO is just... Mwah, chef's kiss. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a thing of beauty. And it says a lot about the industry that something like this is so just unprecedented. This stuff rarely happens, if ever, honestly. I don't think I've ever really seen anything, a uh, monetization regression quite like this, where a developer just nukes a monetization system completely uh, just to, you know, try to appeal to the players, to the community, and keep that aspect healthy and try to show that, you know, they genuinely care about the players. Uh, so I just had to shout out this game and kind of give you guys what I think should be, again, the example of how this industry should conduct itself but uh, most aren't bound to behave like this because short-term profits matter more than community sentiment and the long-term health of their IPs and the optics surrounding them. And so we get situations like, you know, like Overwatch 2, whose monetization has gotten so much worse with its free-to-play model than one, and one no longer exists, so people can't go back to that. And the end result is that Overwatch, the name, the IP, the optics have been stained so much that it, it feels just unrecognizable from its glory days. Whereas a move like this, you know, it might not yield short-term profits per se, but in the long term, you know, this is something that people remember. This is going to create loyalty, and uh, this is just going to generate goodwill and trust that will pay dividends, that will be rewarded over the long term of this development studio and publisher, uh, Shiny Shoe. And I mean, you can already see this happening. If you go to the comment section of the removing in-game monetization announcement, you'll find comments such as, I don't even own the game, and yet I'm very happy to see this change. The correct move, and it will pay off in the long run, devs. Great decision. Uh, what's the? Some people straight up can't believe it. They're like, what's the catch? And here's somebody saying nothing. Just devs noticing the reputation trade-off isn't worth alienating players. GG devs, keep up the good work. Heart emoji, a beautiful move, lads. Very proud to see the team move toward this, so on and so forth. Wow, big news. Very glad that games are gradually moving towards this method. And this is kind of the general discourse surrounding this game. It's just very positive. Just a lot of optimism surrounding its long-term prospects and outlook. And if you look at Steam reviews, the positive sentiment has also lifted its recent reviews, which is currently sitting at 92%, lifted the overall 
review score from 80 some percent to now 87 percent and scrolling down you can see people are acknowledging this really consumer friendly move saying things like i started playing this game and had two hours of amazing gameplay that keeps on giving before going to sleep i saw the news about removing in-game monetization they believe in the community and deserve the support and that's kind of all people are talking about right now and it also helps that of course the game itself people are having a lot of fun with this game's phenomenal but beyond that the stance on the microtransactions changes something that's highlighted in this review monetization removed 10 out of 10 this game is amazing i'm also so excited that the developers are pulling away from the monetization brave and inspired uh you get the idea uh so lots of positivity and if the developers can maintain this kind of consumer friendliness over the long term and this isn't just some stunt that they're pulling for short-term pr positivity then they're going to be known as an indie developer who more than goes out of its way to treat its community right and to set an example for what the rest of the industry should follow so yeah uh, i mean i i'm gonna buy this game just to just to give it kudos for pulling something that this game could have gotten away without doing they didn't need to do this but i do think that they're going to get a lot of press coverage for this i'm going to give them press coverage and i mean we're already seeing articles like this one from pc games and talking about a steam indie hit that went against industry trends by removing all monetization people are talking about this and hopefully uh this kind of positivity surrounding developments like these will encourage other developers to follow suit or at the very least that's one man's take on inkbound and this unprecedented situation surrounding the complete removal of monetization retroactively let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all of this and if you've played inkbound you know what would you say about that game is it something you'd recommend is it something you're having a good time with share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out